Hi, welcome to Rock Hair Metal Invasion. My name is Steve. Coming up on the show today, I'm doing rap hair metal. Yes, it is a thing and it did exist. And um, it uh, was a little bit popular, I guess, back in the 80s. Well, I mean, back in the mid 80s, mid, late 80, mid to late 80s, hard rock heavy metal was popular, was on the charts. But so was hip hop and rap. And um, I guess the idea made sense. Why not sort of combine those uh, popular genres. And it had happened, of course, with Run DMC. Uh, this is from Raising Hell, their album Raising Hell. They had the collaboration with Aerosmith. Walk This Way was a big hit. And, you know, Run DMC actually had been doing, um, you know, had been sampling hard rock, heavy, heavy metal songs for a while and rapping over the top of them. So it was kind of like nothing really new to them, but it was the first um, real big time success that they had. And it was actually really good for Aerosmith as well, because at the time Aerosmith uh, was sort of rebuilding again um, and uh, yeah, sort of gave them some exposure. I remember hearing Walk This Way, really liking it. This was before I even really got into hard rock or heavy metal, just starting to get into music in general, really. And uh, yeah, really liked that song. I remember also then hearing the Aerosmith version going, oh, I don't know about that song. I mean, I appreciate it now, but still for me, I actually, my my preferred version of All This Way is the collaboration with uh, Run DMC. And um, so, yeah, so that's, a, I guess, a, a one example of hard rock. We're going to call it hair metal, but, you know, hard rock and rap uh, being mixed together. But, um, um, and also too, you know, the whole idea for doing this show has come from the fact that Motley Crue have just released a new song uh, unfortunately, it's a cover song, and yeah, I probably have to say, unfortunately, it's uh, a cover of Beastie Boys' Fight for Your Right to Party. Now, I love that song. I even have a Beastie Boys album here. This is uh, the song Fight for Your Right um, to Party uh, is uh, is on this album, Licensed to Ill. really like this. Of course, it's also got um, No Sleep Till Brooklyn, which has Kerry King on guitar, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I was into this album before. I'd really sort of totally got into hard rock and heavy metal back in the day. I was sort of just into pop and rock in general, but really enjoyed this. Uh, I'd probably say Fight for Your Right and No Sleep to the Till Brooklyn are the two sort of heavy heavy rock um, songs uh, with rap over over the top of them. Um, but yeah, uh, of course, you know, production by Rick Rubin. Uh, so that's where the, I guess the connection there with Kerry King and everything is concerned. But yeah, Motley Crue doing Fight for Your Right um, to Party is not exactly what I was waiting for. And of course, they already have a song. They already have a song that, that I'd like called Fight for Your Right. Um, but uh, anyways, that's the idea. That's where I got the idea for this show. I was thinking, actually, you know, Motley Crue, they're kind of a hair metal band, really, aren't they? They're kind of like one of the 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 uh, the first hair metal bands. And um, now they're doing a, you know, a song that was basically a, one of the first sort of rap rock songs. Uh, it was very popular, of course, back in the mid '80s. So um, I thought there were other bands, weren't there, that then came out and tried to sort of do that as well. So um, some quite obscure ones too that you may not have heard of. You probably heard of Beastie Boys, probably heard of um, Run DMC, but have you heard of Big Mouth? Yeah, so Big Mouth are kind of um, very much like after the success of Beastie Boys, are kind of going down that road. But, you know, they they look like, the guys here look like a hair metal band, right? So check them out here. It's pretty much a hair metal band. They've got this guy, BS, on lead vocals. It's kind of hard to find out much about him, but it worked out. His name's actually Robert Sullivan. Um, but, yeah, he's just quite known as BS here. Um, he didn't really go on to do too much else. He's wrapped over some commercials and so forth. But um, interesting, of course, the band themselves. You've got um, Christa, Christopher Caffrey. He goes on, of course, to be in Sabotage. Um, and, you know, he's done solo albums as well. So he's probably the most well-known guy here. This guy here, Johnny Milan, Johnny Milan, he actually ends up uh, forming this band. Um, he's been in a few different groups, actually. But he one one thing I noticed was he formed a band called um, Barfly. And they put out an album called No Place Like Home, produced by Michael Wagner, songwriting by Jack Ponte. So big-time producer, songwriter, but never got released. So, um you, it has now been reissued and re, re, uh, released. So if you want to check that out, uh, it's called Barfly, No Place Like Home. I think it just came out a couple of years ago on Aquanet Records, something like that. But um, yeah, and it sounds like total major label sort of production, everything like that. Um, but yeah, just never got released. So he he went on to do something. And this guy, Victor here, you know, he's sort of, he actually still is involved in the music industry. Like, you know, he's doing like production work, that sort of thing. 
you know, even Kevin goes on to the, the drummer. He he's played in a few bands as well, but nothing really that um, I was aware of. But um, yeah, and there we go. So that's Big Mouth. Now they've got a couple of music videos. I think You Need ID and Christmas Rap. Um, so yeah, um, it's it is what it is. It's it, it is essentially hard rock with some rap vocals. This guy uh, BS Robert Sullivan. He very much does sound. Uh, like one of the Beastie Boys, he's rapping a bit like that. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, I don't mind it. It's not really something I put on a lot. And you can pick it up pretty cheap and find it pretty cheap. But, yeah, Big Mouth, quite it's not right. Just the one album. Uh, similar sort of one, this is Metal MC. Uh, I love the hype sticker. Caution, deranged metal rap guitarist hiding under sticker. View only in the privacy of your own home. Um, but yeah, and there's the guys at the back now. I mean, none of these guys I'm really familiar with other than supposedly from what I found out, you know, they, they, they'd sort of been in the music business and been in different bands. They're not particularly, you know, uh, hard rock, uh, musicians, uh, or heavy metal musicians. They're just, you know, musicians who have played in different bands that decided, Hey, let's just form this band, make it a sort of a rap rock type band. Um, they've got two vocalists, Johnny Go and um the shack i think it is yeah and then you just got your your drummer um dr mo and waff on guitar um so yeah and this one music video i think it was for born to party yeah and there's a whole lot of like roller skaters and bmx bike riders and all that kind of stuff um during the, throughout the music video um and i it's interesting too when you um open up the inner sleeve here you know, they've got merch as well, you know, T-shirts and shit. Um, yeah, so sweatshirts and all this kind of stuff. Does anyone ever buy this? Uh, especially the fan club video. Um, warning contains nudity. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, Metal MC Enterprises. But this is just a one and done thing. You know, it's the one music video. And uh, it's actually on Enigma, Enigma Records. You know, so, um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's kind of similar to Big Mouth. It's it's it is for its time. What you'd imagine uh, it would be, and um, that's probably the the best thing I can say about it. All right, now this one's getting a little bit more interesting. It's actually not the eighties. This is now we're now getting into the um, early nineties. This is a band called Hard Corpse. Now, probably a bit of a stretch to say this is like hair metal rap, but you know it's definitely that. That it's certainly the hard rock sort of rap. Um, they've got, um, you know, the funk metal was kind of becoming popular. This is early 90s, 91. This is on a major label. It's on Interscope. Um, and you can sort of imagine this is, it's not like, it doesn't sound like Rage Against the Machine, but this is only like a year before they came out. And it's getting a little bit closer to that kind of a sound. Uh, this is Death Before Dishonor. It's actually produced by um, uh, Jam Master J, um, who is from Run DMC. But, um, yeah, it's got like the guys here, Dirty Bob, Rev Kev, The Beast, Major Cut, Ma Mastro KO, and Machine Gun Kelly. Not the Machine Gun Kelly that, you know, is kind of more well-known now or that played Tommy Lee in The Dirt. Not that guy. Different Machine Gun Kelly. Um, but uh, anyway, these four guys, these four guys here, The Beast, Major Cut, uh, KO, I think his name is... Um, Kenny Owens, yeah. So he then, uh, and oh, and Machine Gun Kelly, I'm not too sure who he is, but um, yeah, anyway, he, because obviously he's, that's, you know, he's, he's got a, a real name, but I'm not sure. But anyway, he, these four, they then formed this band called Stone Deep. And uh, they kind of, they're still doing the rapping and the rock sort of stuff. Uh, they put out a few independent releases in the in the 90s or, you know, mid 90s. But um, yeah, yeah. Um, and what's interesting too, they've got a song here uh, called Back in Black. Yes, the ACDC song, which is actually quite good. I, I think, um, well, it's a great song, right? So it's like, you know, they've covered a, gr a great song, but it sounds quite good um, with the sort of more of a um, a rap um, rap type vocals over it. Yeah. Um, what else is good? I, Hard Corpse, there's a music video for that. Um, I don't mind this. I don't mind this. Um, of the sort of, you know, if I had to cho choose between Metal MC, um, big mouth and this, I'd go with this, but this is of course a bit later. This is 91, but, um, yeah. And also when, uh, when they form the band, uh, when these four guys, uh, form the band stone deep, they get, um, 
they get Glenn Cummings uh, into the band, who'd been in a band called Ludicrous and also Scatterbrain. So um, he comes in. So he's kind of a bit more known as well. So, um, but yeah, there we go. That's Hard Corpse. Just the one album. Um, next one. Okay, we're back to the hair metal uh, stuff here now. So this is this is a band called Swedish Erotica. Probably not the best name for a band, but I, I'm assuming they're from Sweden. But anyway, um, looking at their names and everything, I think they released a couple of albums and they've got like a compilation album as well. Uh, this one came out in 1989 on Virgin Records. Um, they then have another release, I think, on Victor in about 94. And there's, they're still like, look, the image wise, they've still got a bit of an image, but they definitely get quite, they sound a lot like Alice in Chains on their next album. But this one's Total Hair Metal. Uh, it's um, it's okay. It's okay. But what's interesting, there's a song on here called Loaded Gun. And believe it or not, the B side, and, and believe it or not, I own it. Um, so for the single We're Wild, Young and Free, the B-side is Loaded Rap. So they take their song Loaded, Loaded Gun and make it a rap song and call it Loaded Rap. And it's totally, they're just the guys like rapping over it rather than singing over it. I'm not sure if the lyrics have changed. Maybe, I, I don't know. Um, I, I actually prefer Loaded Gun, the, the original. Um, I don't really think we needed that. But again, this is 89. This is the early days for rap rock sort of stuff. So, you know, um, yeah. I, I've got it in my collection, so I thought I'll show that. It definitely fits the theme. Next one, uh, Black and White. Now, I actually quite like this. I actually had this back in the day. I mean, not not on release day or anything like that, but very much around the time it came out because it was like in the bargain bins pretty quickly, I think. And I thought, oh, I'll check it out. Um, and the rumor was it had like guys from Guns N' Roses and Motley Crue playing on it, and maybe it does. I don't really know because it's really, there's not a lot of information on here. Um, one thing um, it does have is it's produced by this guy, Anthony T. Riccasoni, uh, who is a guy who plays on the Rhett Forrester, even the score album. Or I think he plays on it. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, well, he's, he's a producer. Yeah, what's well, his associate producer, Anthony Rescasino? Maybe he's just a producer, actually. Um, yeah, maybe he is. Either way, he's got some connection here with Rhett. So, and then, yeah, so he's production on this, but he's also looks like he's playing bass on the on the album. But yeah, like I said, I heard rumors that there were like you know guys from Motley Crue, Guns N' Roses, or whatever, playing on this. I don't know, but I like the song Tea Time. And also, I like the song Feel the Vibe. Yeah, it's pretty good. Rock the House. Um, yeah, some song titles I really couldn't even say on this show. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a one and done thing. Um, but I don't mind it. I don't mind it. Um, and it's interesting for its time in 1988. All right. Um, the last couple I'm going to show, they're not really like... Uh, a whole, the whole album's not like rap, hair metal, but there's a song on each of these albums that is an example of it. And Faster Pussycat have a song called Babylon, uh, which, um, you know, uh, Tammy kind of is sort of rapping a little bit when he sings. Uh, also, it's got some like scratching on it by um, Ricky Rackman. Um, you know, the DJ, the VJ or whatever from MTV, um, you know, who owned the cat house with um, Tammy. So, yeah, um, it's definitely, it sounds a little bit like the Beastie Boys. It sounds a little bit like that. I quite like it, actually. Um, so, yeah, from their um, debut album. So Babylon, definitely, I think, could you could consider that as a sort of one of the early um, examples of rap and rock and, you know, rap hair metal. And then finally, a bit of a surprise, but believe it or not, Pip Wing has done some rapping. Yep, uh, not probably um, one of the better albums. I mean, I think the first is good, and the third is a fantastic. Paul and their latest albums, awesome. But um, there's some good songs on here, um, and even Baptized by Fire, which is the song I'm talking about, isn't bad. But in the song, Pip decides to incorporate a little bit of rapping. I think it's him doing the rapping. Yeah, didn't really need it. But um, anyway, it is an example of hair metal, hard rock, whatever you want to call it, and rap in a song. So, um, yeah. And uh, that is it. my show on rap, hair metal, rap, hard rock, rap, rap rock, early versions of rap and rock. 
Hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm sure there's probably some other examples, but that's what I was able to find in my collection. I mean, I, I know there's Anthrax, of course. They collaborated um, with Public Enemy. And, you know, once the 90s come come in, you know, like I said, you've got Rage Against the Machine and then Limp Bizkit. And there's, you know, that whole scene, the new metal scene was... Uh, you know, features a lot of rap, you know, but um, talking about more the sort of mid to late 80s and the sort of beginnings of that rap rock uh, collaborations. And, of course, Judgment Night, which uh, I've got on CD, that is a, that's a really good example of that as well. Uh, but, again, when that comes out, it's less of the hair metal bands and more of the, believe it or not, the, the grunge bands really are collaborating then with some of the hip-hop artists. But, um, yeah, anyway, that's it for today. Um if you've enjoyed this type of content, make sure you subscribe, hit the thumbs up, and um, yeah, if you've got some comments, please leave a comment. Love to get some comments. All right, thanks for watching. We'll catch you later. See ya.